Okay, John, exactly what should I be talking to our customers about if they're asking about the difference between peering and transit? Um, peering uh, is when two providers or a content provider and a content consumer uh, decide to establish a direct connection between themselves and they're not using a carrier to haul those bits or those bytes between their two networks. Um, most people, when they think about internet or they're ordering internet services, they're ordering what's called transit. They're calling up a company like Level 3 or Lumos or Comcast and they're getting a cable modem or a 1 gig circuit or maybe if they can afford it, a 10 gig circuit. That's, that's plain and simple, that's transit. That is your network transiting to the internet. Uh, peering is different. Peering tends to happen at large data centers where there's a lot of uh, content providers, uh, sometimes eyeball networks like ISPs that we just talked about where they get together and they say, I have a lot of traffic that I need to send and I have a lot of traffic that I want to receive and they'll build direct 10 gig or 100 gig connections between their networks. And the nice thing about that is those are usually settlement free, which means that you're not paying the other person to carry all that traffic, you are able, once your ports are configured and once your ports are plugged up, it's like a buffet. It's all you can eat, as much traffic as you can send and receive until you reach the limit of that physical port. And then when you reach that limit, you order another cross connect from the data center and you now you're at 20 gig or you order four and you're at 40 or you do 100 gigs. Okay, so you're talking about all you can eat buffet and sound like this may also affect internet speed. So if I have a customer that says, hey, I think I need to increase my bandwidth. I need more internet, or I need uh, to buy some more bandwidth. Would this enter into that conversation, and how, how would this play into that scenario? It, it, it definitely does. A lot of times when a customer says, I need to order more internet, what they're really saying is the internet that I already have is congested and slow. Maybe I don't realize it yet, but let's say I've got a, a 300 meg uh, cable modem or a 300 meg circuit that goes to the internet, and I'm constantly having problems where uh, screens are timing out, um, I can't do my uploads, maybe my voice is, doesn't sound very good, or there's periods where internet use, where users are complaining about the internet being slow. Not necessarily down, but being slow. What's happening is your 300 meg circuit is probably fine. Uh, the issue is when you go to that next hop that your, that your ISP router is at, and that ISP then is aggregating hundreds or thousands of customers that all have 300 meg circuits, they may not have enough backbone capacity and now with the the COVID-19 stuff that we're all dealing with a lot of these users are at home so kids during the day before they were at school and they were on you know supposed to be doing classwork now they're all at home they're maybe uh, watching movies on Netflix um, using the internet doing gaming and whatnot so there's a, a, a lot of traffic that these carriers now these transit providers have to all uh, take and do something useful with some cases, and sometimes they'll have a Netflix cache appliance on their network. Uh, some smaller carriers may not. Uh, sometimes the larger carriers, their Netflix cache box is overwhelmed and it's not able to keep up with the load. So that the, at, it, at a certain point, you have to take all this traffic and it has to, if it's Netflix traffic, it has to make it over to Netflix. Peering is the best way to do that. Peering is the way that the large uh, providers and the, and the content providers like to uh, network together. Um, because again, their goal is not to have to pay for uh, expensive transit, um, you know, to haul their movies or get video games or whatever the content is. So, in many cases, if you're if you're struggling with your business connection, uh, simply ordering a faster connection, if it's going to a congested uh, router, isn't going to make it any faster. All you did was spend more money until that provider that you're using actually fixes the problem and orders more transit on their side or corrects their problem with more peering, your packets are still going to be just as clogged up as they were before. Okay, that sounds like a lot of great information about what I'm getting from the internet or coming from the internet. Well, how about a customer who calls in and says, boy, my, my backups take forever overnight to load. Mm -hmm. um, I think I need to buy more internet or more bandwidth for that. Does that fall into the same category or is this similar? Or what's it, the difference? It could, be, it could be part of the same problem. You have to look at where you're backing up to. Let's say you're backing up to Google, and your uh, current provider is an uh, let's, let's just say it's a it's a cable modem, and if your current provider is congested uh, along that span to Google, you're not going to be able to back up very well. You're going to have to find a, a provider or a connection or get your own peering. If you're a larger network, get your own peering where you have a better, more direct path to Google. Um, it all depends upon what what traffic you're trying to send at high volumes. Um, some, sometimes the congestion between two providers or a content provider 
and a, and a carrier is temporary. Sometimes they can be chronic and they can be lasting uh, ongoing issues that may last six, eight, 12 months or more. Okay, so that, that covers a lot of the internet connection. What other pieces of the network or pieces of hardware associated with it might be the choke point or the weak link in the chain that cause my internet or a business internet to appear slow? At your office, um, the, the first thing you should look at is, it, let's say you put a, a, a circuit faster than 100 megs in, right? The first thing you'd look at is, well, did I plug it into a gigabit capable switch? If you bought a 300 meg circuit and your switch is still running at 100 megs, then obviously you, you're going to be uh, capped by the, the rate at which that switch can send and receive packets. So make sure that you have a gigabit capable switch. Not all gigabit switches are created equal. Um, a lot of uh, cheaper gigabit switches don't have any buffering in them whatsoever, which means they're, they're prone to temporary um, congestion, which causes a lot of drops. Um, so a quality top of rack um, or a small core switch, something that costs more than $30 from Best Buy, not to criticize Best Buy, but you know, if you're a, a larger company, you don't want to be running through a $30 switch. Right. So the, so the first thing you should look at is, is your switch. The second thing is your router or your firewall. Um, a lot of routers or firewalls, if they're older than a couple of years, aren't rated for gigabit speeds. Um, it's pretty common, even if, the, even if the router firewall has a gigabit interface on the box, it may only be able to, to carry 250 megs of traffic. Meraki um, entry-level firewalls are a good example of that. Um, some sonic walls also have gigabit ports. Again, they tap out at about 250, 300 megabits of throughput. So check in your firewall to make sure it truly can handle um, those speeds is a good next step um, as far as you know congestion that you can make sure things that you can handle as a business within your own walls you know some of these things that we've been talking about before with peering in transit those are decisions and, and business decisions and things that your carriers and, and, and your transit providers have to do you don't really have control over that other than to vote with your wallet and say I'm gonna fire you and hire this other guy over here because I like his network better it's expensive to switch a lot of people can't right. easily do that these are things that we've been talking about, though, that you can do within your own office to make your connection run better, run faster. And how about the uh, your network connection or the speed that your uh, server is connected to that too? Can that also be a choke point in that? It it can be. Some sometimes your um your, your server is running at 100 megs again when it, when it, when you have a lot of users that are on the on a network that are trying to get into a server, and you've got congestion. If you're running off of a cheap switch with poor buffering and you have multiple gigabit connections all coming into a server that only has a single gigabit connection, you can have temporary um, oversubscription. Uh, that will cause drops. That will cause that file that you're clicking on to download to, to bring back to your computer or the file to open or that file that you're clicking on to save. That can cause um, delays in, in those uh, okay. transactions. Um, typically with servers, the, the, the main problem that we, we will see with the server is, is outdated older technology where, again, if you've that server's been sitting in the corner running for the last six years. Its processors are six years old. The applications it run, it's running on may be newer and faster and using more resources. Your brand new desktops can certainly send and receive traffic a lot faster than that server may be able to if they're a lot newer. So uh, if, if you have an older server, for example, that's, a, that's another common thing that we need to look at and say, okay, this is, you know, that's, that's the, the problem that you're having is that your server can't keep up. The bus speeds on the back, on that server backplane are not really designed for multiple multiple gigabit sustained bit rates right. coming through to it. Okay, so let me see now if I've got this right. You can help me out if I haven't. So if a customer comes in and says, hey, I think I need to order more internet, my internet's slow, my backup's not working, or something along those lines, we really need to probably get our engineers to go over there and take a look at their network, evaluate before they spend any money on anything, and see if, A, maybe it's just an inexpensive piece of hardware we can replace with a managed service device that might cost them $30 a month, mm -hmm. or maybe see if we could arrange to make them part of a peering network where they could get some faster uh, performance without having to buy more internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's maybe a much smaller cost per month than doubling or tripling your circuit size. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great point. If you, if you already have bought a gigabit circuit and it's not meeting your needs, Buying another gigabit circuit from the same provider is not likely to solve that problem if it's your congestion. So if you have, especially uh, networks like schools that have a lot of um, users, uh, high concentration of users during short, you know, you know short air, uh, bursts, um, having uh, uh, peer content is is very useful there. A lot of schools use a lot of Google, a lot of YouTube, 
um, Blackboard. There's there's certain uh, networks or content providers that you can get via peering that um, at a school or uh, a dorm, lots of lots of users that are watching Netflix, for right. example, that can that can save you a lot of money because instead of paying X amount of dollars per transit, you can pay less and get peered connections, and then transfer all that eyeball or or content delivery traffic onto a, a more affordable pipe. All right. Well, so I think our message today is, before you go out and and buy more expensive internet. Give us a call and uh, let our engineers evaluate your network, take a look at the hardware and your connection, and we'll see if we can't find a way to make it more cost affordable um, than after actually going out and buying more internet or more bandwidth. Check your, one, one thing I should add too, we run into this all the time, check your wireless. <laughs> you know, if you, if you uh, bought a, a gigabit circuit and you're getting 15 megs and you're not happy about that, well, at, at least half the time when we get that call, it's because the person's testing on a, a wire, either a wireless network, a wireless connection that's not good. You know, if you only have two bars, you're not going to get 100 uh, megs of download uh, speed on your phone typically. So, the, that's one of the first things too that we would like to rule out is make sure the customer is not having wireless issues. You know, distinguish between a wired network issue and a wireless network issue. Right. You know, don't go out and spend more money on on your internet connection if it's just your wireless, your WAP that needs to be upgraded. Right. And be careful running speed tests on the slowest computer you have in the office. That might not be the best way to test the speed of your network. Yep. But we'll help you out with all of those things. Mm -hmm. so again, I'm Mark Lee from Wittrip. This is John Larson. Uh, if you have a network problem, call us. We'd like to work on your network while you work on your business. Thank you.